Hello, I'm Tom Harmer, your town manager. Thank you for joining me for this edition of Talk of the Town. Today, we're here at Durant Park, the Mantee County portion of Longboat Key, a beautiful natural reserve and our, our preserve. Our, our residents understand how important the environment is here on the island. This is a jewel on the island here that we like to talk about and share with the public and we love to see the amount of visitors that come out. It's also right here on the bay and as you know, water quality is so important to us here on Longboat Key. So today I wanna to talk about a partnership that we have with Manatee County and I'm gonna introduce you to our partner and he'll share a little bit about this new program they're working on. It's a very innovative program that deals with oyster shells. And so I'm gonna come over here and would like to introduce you to Sean. Hey, Sean. Hey, Tom, good morning. Yeah. Good morning, good to see you. Good to see you too. Yeah, thanks for coming out. We're really excited about this program. I'm excited about this yeah. as well. I'm glad to be here. Yeah. So um, Vertical Oyster Gardens, is that what it's called? Yeah, this program is called the Vertical Oyster Garden Program. And the idea is that it's a community-based initiative that helps improve water quality and overall the health of our ecosystem here in Southwest Florida. So we're really excited to be partnering with you all because like I said, this is a community-based initiative. And so building community is what it's all about, especially when it comes to ecological restoration. Okay, so very good. We're at the observation deck out here in Durant Park. And I know you've looked at this area and believe it's a good spot for for your program. Can you just share a little bit with our viewers what is a oyster garden? What is a vertical oyster garden? Absolutely. So a vertical oyster garden is essentially a collection of recycled oyster shells. So all of these shells come from local restaurants and we partner with local organizations to make this, this happen where we can take these recycled shells and turn them into this beautiful vertical oyster garden. The idea here is that we can then take this collection of shells and mount it underneath of docks. So here at Durant Park, we're gonna place a few of them around the dock. And the idea is that when you create space for wildlife to live, specifically in this case, juvenile or young oysters, it allows them to land on these oyster shells and then start growing themselves. And the reason that's important is that oysters provide a lot of services in our ecosystem. So oysters provide food for a lot of creatures in this environment. But importantly, they also filter the water. So they're sort of like biological engineers in that way. They're the superheroes of this ecosystem. They filter water and improve water quality locally and in the region here. So this, like I said, is an idea where we've um, taken recycled oyster shells and tried to dream up a way for a community initiative to improve water quality. Oh, that, that's great. Water quality is so important here, obviously, as a barrier island off of Sarasota Bay. And so this is a program that's new. Or is this rolling out in uh, Manatee County and other locations? It is, absolutely. So this is a partnership with the Tampa Bay Estuary Program, the Sarasota Bay Estuary mm -hmm. Program, and START, the Solutions to Avoid Red Tide. So together with those organizations, this is something new that we're trying. We're deploying these all around the county in both Manatee and actually in Sarasota, uh, given that this is a partnership with Sarasota Bay Estuary Program and Tampa Bay Estuary Program. So the idea is that we're impacting the entire watershed and trying to improve the health of the Sarasota Bay as a whole. And then hopefully, you know, that trickles out into areas like the Gulf of Mexico as well. And, and so after we've finished talking today, you're going to actually install these here around this deck. Absolutely, so once we're finished speaking here in just a few moments, I'm gonna install a few of these around the deck and then folks in the community can come out and see the work that we've done today and, and actually track the progress of what's going on as these establish. You know, it may take anywhere from six weeks to six months for life to establish on here. Usually it's pretty quick, but I tell folks, you know, it's, it's one of those really cool things to come and check on over the weeks after we install it because, you know, it really starts to progress and they'll see big differences with these as the months move on, especially after oyster season, oyster spawning season, I should say, here in these summer months. Is there any maintenance that you need to do with, to come back out and do anything every so often? The great thing about this is that it's virtually maintenance free. Mm -hmm. You know, I like to check on them after I install some, I'll come and make sure that they haven't um, you know, fallen apart or fallen down, but we've had a, a pretty high level of success with this method where we're using stainless steel wire attached uh, on the underside of docks and we haven't had any problems so far with you know, them falling off the docks or creating any sort of problem in that manner. Uh, the great thing that we're working on too is a citizen science initiative where we're hopefully going to be able to engage the community in uh, monitoring of these. And so the citizens that choose to you know, put these under their own docks are then able to monitor the growth and, and report on what sort of uh, creatures and how many of them are growing on these vertical oyster gardens. So where do the shells come from? Where do you where do you get the shells from? That's a great question. So the really cool thing that I love about this is that 
because it's a community-based in initiative, it starts here in the community. So again, every oyster shell that you see on this vertical oyster garden was on somebody's plate first. Mm -hmm. So it starts on the plate and it ends back in our environment here. And the idea is that we gather those recycled oyster shells uh, with the help of our partner Start, the solutions to avoid red tide, and a number of other local uh, restaurants in the area. And the idea is we gather up those shells and we store them for usually a period of six months and allow them to quarantine to prevent any sort of bacterial infection in our waterways. And then after that period, we can then use them in oyster restoration. So this is a long-term project. How, how long do you think these uh, shells will be out here? That's a great question too. It is a long-term project and the idea of you know improving water quality is a really, it's, it's more of a way of thinking than a one-time fix. And so the idea is that this will be a project that lasts for a long time, especially as we try to ramp this up in the community. The idea is that the more folks we can get in, uh, interested in deploying these vertical oyster gardens, the better uh, because by some estimates, a single oyster can filter up to 50 gallons of water in a day. Scientists are still trying to exactly quantify that number, but even if an oyster was half of that, that's incredibly impressive. So, you know, the more oysters we can get out in our waterway here, the more it's going to do for water quality. So long term, we're thinking that this is a great solution uh, that is, you know, has durability. It, it, it will last under your dock and it will have lasting impacts on water quality here. So do you know yet how many you're going to install at the dock or will you find out later once you get in the water? Well, I brought 50 of them today okay. and we'll see how they how they look when we get going. The idea is that you kind of have to, once you start installing, you get an idea for how many you can fit under there. Um, but the idea is that you don't want them too far apart from each other so that the little creatures that start to land and establish here mm. might be able to move from one to the other. So we like to have a sort of a dense network of these under the dock here. So I figured we'd start with 50. We'll consider this sort of like the test pilot phase. Oh. And then if that goes well, we can move into deploying more. And so if a, a visitor or a resident comes out here and walks out on the deck, will they be able to see the, the vertical gardens? Absolutely, so the idea here is that it's highly visible for the public yeah. as well. So um, again, I keep talking about community-based initiative, yeah. but for me, uh, conservation and restoration really begins with the community. And so being able to have this accessible and viewable by the public is really important for me uh, and for Manatee County as well. And so the idea is that if, if residents of the community wanna come out and look, they're absolutely welcome to. I highly encourage it and invite them to come out and take a look. Uh, just look over the edge of the railing here. Be careful not to mm -hmm. take a cannonball over the side, <laughs> but uh, look around the edge of the railing here and you'll be able to see these hanging off the dock. Good. Is there a place on your website that they can get more information about the program? Absolutely. There's a few resources. So right now, um, mymanatee.org is a great place to get involved with parks and natural resources and the uh, initiatives that we have going mm -hmm. on there. Uh, if your residents of the community here are interested in being involved with water quality initiatives, Sarasota Bay Estuary Program and the Tampa Bay Estuary Program are great organizations to be involved with as well. And then again, Start or Solutions to Avoid Red Tide is a great organization to be involved with here as well. Okay, perfect. Is there anything else you'd like to share with our viewers today while we're out here talking about this program? Like I said, I, I just want to echo that this is a community-based initiative yeah. and it really takes um, you know, a community to build something unique like this. I really believe in the, the mentality that a rising tide raises all ships. So putting out programs like this and projects like this in the community really does make a difference, yeah. especially when it comes to water quality. You know, we really need to, I think in the, there's a lot of concern now about water quality moving forward and generally I think the community um, here on Longboat Key and generally in the Gulf Coast region is very concerned about water quality. So I think folks often look for a way to get involved and this is a great way to get involved. Um, if residents of Longboat Key are interested in putting these on their own docks, that's absolutely something that we can accommodate as well. This is a free program to the public. Anybody with dock space is allowed to uh, come and get these for free and deploy them on their own dock. So again, you know, trying to reiterate that it's, it's all about the community here and trying to improve water quality locally. I think that's really important at the end because we obviously we have a lot of residents that live on the water here with their own private docks and there is an opportunity if they would like to install these at their docks that program is available for that as well. Absolutely. It's, it's really does a lot for the water quality, so we keep mentioning that, but um, like I said, oysters filter the water, they provide food for a number of creatures in the area, and it can actually attract a lot of fish life as well because there's all sorts of small marine invertebrates that a lot of our big fish in the area like to eat. So, uh, you know, routinely I'll see things like snook and redfish hanging around some of these vertical oyster huh. gardens. So for the fishing folks, maybe, I'm not saying it's the silver bullet, <laughs> but it's maybe something to consider, you know, improving the water quality in your area here. Yeah, lot, lots of benefits. Well, well, thank you, Sean. Sean Swartz, for Environmental Specialist with Manatee County. 
uh, really excited about the partnership with Manji County to offer this uh, to the town, but also to our residents. So um, wanted to really just thank our uh, viewers for coming out today and obviously watching the video as well. Uh, please come out to Durant Park and take a look at our new uh, vertical oyster gardens and um, follow how they uh, evolve and work over the next uh, period of time. So uh, again, thank you for joining us for t t today's edition of Talk of the Town.